Uh, I do want to welcome everyone to the um, Node uh, workshop. Um, I posted a link in the chat. Um, I posted a link in the chat um, with the repository. Just go ahead and uh, clone that repository. Um, so that way, once we get it, once you get it downloaded, we can just go ahead and jump straight into um, actually uh, writing routes and stuff like that. So um, I'll basically show you what's inside here. Let me zoom in. Oh, no, not there. I can't zoom in here. Oh, there you go. All right. So um, hopefully, guys, hopefully you guys can see that better. Uh, let me remove this line. But that is the repository you need to go to. So inside this file, we have an index.js file. That's basically where we're going to set up our server. Um, we have a utils file with, uh, an, uh, well, we have a utils folder with a notes file. Uh, in here just has utilities that we will need throughout um, the workshop. So what we're going to be building is we're going to be building like a basic um, CRUD API. CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. So you're going to be able to create notes, update notes, delete notes, and um, read notes. I forgot that one. Um, it's the R in CRUD. I don't know how I forgot that. But anyway, um, so basically these um, utilities allow us to load notes and save notes. And those are going to come in uh, handy uh, in just a little bit. Um, then we have a routes folder, a DB folder, and a controllers folder. We're going to add files to those in a second. First thing we need to do uh, is we need to um, initialize NPM. Uh, NPM stands for, stands for Node Package Manager, and it basically allows us to install and add uh, different dependencies to our project. So I'm going to use the terminal that's built into Visual Studio Code. Uh, and to do that, you do Control tilde. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type npm init dash y. And the reason why I'm adding this dash y uh, is because npm asks you a bunch of questions uh, when you're setting up the, um, you know, when you're setting it up. Uh, I don't want to answer those questions. So I'm just going to say yes to everything. Uh, and it's going to use default values for everything. So it created this package.json file right here. Uh, and while I'm not really going, going to go line by line in here, I'll, I'll include some important things uh, like scripts. You can add scripts to automate certain things like uh, running our server and, and building our, our, our project and stuff like that. Repositories are just showing what type of uh, version control we're using um, and where it's going to be hosted uh, and stuff like that. There's a lot of other stuff in there. But. Yes, we are using Visual Studio Code, always using Visual Studio Code. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do, let me back, let me open the terminal back up again. So again, that's control tilde. I'm going to clear that out. The first package we're going to install um, is Express. Uh, and that's basically, so in Node, you can write a basic web server using the HTTP module. Uh, but we're going to use Express just because it abstracts like a lot of the things that HTTP module does um, that we don't need. Um, so we're going to install Express by typing npm install Express. And it's going to get it from the different repository and install it. Uh, and so if we look at our Microsoft JSON, and we go to dependencies, we see Express right here. Okay. Uh, now, there is one other package that we're going to need, um, but it's not going to be a regular dependency. It's going to be called, what's called a dev dependency. Um, and so it's, and that's called node mod. So to install that, we're going to do npm, npm install node mod. And we're going to add a flag of dash D. And what? That didn't look good. 
Don't do that. If, if you haven't typed that in yet, don't, don't do it. I'm not really used to NPM that much because I don't use it, but it, I, we're just using it because it comes with Node. Um, so. Oh, so it's NPM install node mon dash dash save dash dev. There we go. Okay, so those were the two commands we typed in. We typed in npm install express and npm install node mon dash dash save dash dev. Basically, that dash dash save dash dev creates it as a dev dependency, meaning it's not needed to run the project, um, but it does you know provide some extra benefits to us while we're actually developing it. And basically, what node mon does is it allows you to continue to run your server or run any node file without having to stop and then refresh and stuff like that. You can just run it and it'll refresh automatically. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. Are you, are you guys not able to hear me? Hello? Okay. All right. Yeah. So my, that may just be an issue with, with I'm, 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 not, I'm not sure. Um, but someone did ask the question. Sorry, I did not see what you do to get to the JSON file. So to do that, we typed npm uh, init dash y, and it creates it. All right. Yep. And then you're going to, once you, once you do that, then you're going to run those two commands, npm install express, and then npm install node mon dash dash save dash dev. All right, let's now, let's actually go ahead and get started with um, creating our server. Okay. So to do that, uh, I can close the terminal for right now. Uh, we're going to click this index.js file. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to require Express. So hold on a second. So to do that, we type const express equals require express. So that's going to get Express for us. Um, but then we need to now use Express. And so to do that, we do const app equals Express. And now we need to also set a port that we want our server to run on. So to do that, we type const port. Now it's kind of commonplace that if you're going to upload um, your server to like Heroku or something like that, you use something called pros equals um, equals process dot emb dot port. However, that's not going to, yes, it, will, it is being recorded. However, this will not work for us because we're not using an emb. So what we then do is we type or at 3001. And basically what they're saying is we want to set the port to whatever is in process.emb.port, but if that's not available, then we're going to set port to 3001. Um, yeah. And so now what we want to do is we want to, uh, we want the server to listen on that port for anything. So to do that, we type f.listen. Uh, port and then we're going to log something to the console. So we do console dot log back ticks. Back ticks is the key next to the one. Uh, server listening. Let's see. 
on port dollar sign port. Now, if we want to add some extra flair to it, uh, we can also add an emoji. Um, so that's command control space on Mac. If you're on Windows, it's um, Windows key dot. So now I'm going to save this. Um, and we can run it by opening the terminal again. And then typing node source slash uh, index dot js. And that's going to run it. Um, but we don't really want to do that because we installed Nodemon. So we want to create a script that we can run once um, and then we'll refresh whenever we make changes to the server. So I'm going to stop the server listening by, type, by holding Control C. And what I like to do is I like to clear the terminals just so we don't have a whole lot of there, a lot of stuff there. So we're going to add a script. Um, so we're going to come up to scripts. We're going to title the script dev. And inside here, we're going to type node mon uh, source slash index. That's it, yes. Save that. And then we're going to type um, npm run dev in the terminal. And that's not going to run it. So we don't need to worry about that ever again. So we can actually uh, go ahead and close this. All right. So now let's go ahead and um, start with some logic. Okay. Let me show you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a route for when we need to create a node. So first in controllers, we're going to create a new file. We're going to call it index.js. And we're going to import the path, uh, path uh, module. So that's const path equals require path. And then we're going to include our um, utilities that we used, that we added earlier. So that's going to be const load notes, comma, save notes equals require dot slash. I'm sorry. Nope. Where am I going? Dot, dot slash services and utils. I'm all over the place right now. Notes. All right. And then we want to create a, a variable for our. Um, right now, what I've done is I have um, initialized Express, initialized the server, um, and now we're creating the routes. So first, we're starting by creating the logic. Uh, now, what I want to do is I want to create a variable for the path to the database file. So to do that, we create a variable db file equals path dot resolve. Yes, I'm spelling that right. Okay, I don't know where that's coming from. Um, underscore their name slash db slash notes. Uh, dot JSON. And for some reason, this path dot resolve is not working. Oh, you know why it's not working? Yes, you just noticed it too, Sophie. That's why it's not working, because uh, I added two A's. <laughs> um, all right, so now that should so we're going to start off by creating the logic for the create um, route. So that's going to be const create note equals request response 
This is an arrow function. Uh, if you attended our JavaScript workshop, you might have seen this. See, seen this. It's basically a shorthand notation for creating a regular function. So we're going to load the notes in. So we're going to create a variable called const notes equals load notes. And load notes request a file. And we already created that file with db file. So we're going to just type db file. Now what we want to do, each note has an ID, um, but to generate that ID is basically um, the length of the array up to that current point. So we're going to create a variable called ID equals notes.length. Yep. And then we're going to get the body from whatever's been sent. So people, someone's, uh, a user is going to send a body to the server that we want to then parse. So we're going to type let body equals request dot body. Okay. Then we're going to create a variable for the note. Basically, the note is going to be the body and the ID, the ID that's been sent. So to do that, we can use the um, spread or i think it's spread or rest i don't know but it, um parameter i think it's spread it's spread um and then id all right and now we want to add that add that note i'm sorry people are in my discord here and it's like annoying uh, uh goodbye <laughs> um so yeah now we want to add this note to that array. So we do notes dot push note. Now we want to save our notes because right now we have a we've updated the array of notes. Uh, again, this right here is an array of notes. Uh, we just updated it, so now we need to save that data, save it in the database. We're not really using the database; we're using a mock data. But we're going to save it in there. So first, we're going to do a try, try and catch block. And so we want to use save notes. And save notes takes a notes array and a file. So we're going to use notes, comma db file. And then we're going to return to the user a status code. Uh, res dot status. Uh, 200 that, that's telling them that everything went okay and then we're going to also return them a response of, of some json so we do res.json we're going to return the note that we created now if this does not work we have a catch right here it's catch not catcher And we're going to create a variable called message, which is going to be an object. It's going to say error could couldn't add note for some reason or other. And then we're going to return a, st a status of 400. This basically says that, that there was a bad request name. And we're going to return the JSON. OK. So I mean, that's the logic for a create the create note. But we actually haven't um, created the route. And so we're going to do that right now. We're going to actually, first of all, we're going to do is we're going to export our, um, our logic. So we're going to do module dot exports equals an object with create note and then we're going to come to routes add a new file we're going to also call this index.js all right and what we're going to do is we're going to require expressing here too
And then we're going to add the logic from our create route. So to do that, it's going to be const. We're going to destructure it. But first, let's require the actual file. All right. And so the file that we want to destructure is create node. And so now we want to use um, the built in router in Express. So to use that, we're going to create a variable uh, called API router equals express.router. And now we're going to add our route. So we're going to type API router dot post. Remember, create note takes in a request and a response. Okay. So basically, this is saying we're creating a route um, on the um, root of the server, um, and we want to look for any post um, method on that on that URL. So now to add this to our actual server. Hold on. So now to add this to our actual server, we're going to come back to the index.js that's inside source, not in routes or controllers. And we're going to require our API router. So to do that, it's going to be const API. Actually, first, I need to make sure I, no, I didn't export it. So export. Modules dot x no modules module dot exports equals API router. So then a const API router equals require. slash index okay so now we need to actually use our api router and to do that i, I use that word use intentionally uh, we need to add it by use by saying app dot use um, and then the route and then the the actual router so to do that we're going to do app dot use slash API, comma, API router. And we're going to test this out in a second. Um, but before we do that, we also need to tell Express um, that we want to accept JSON. And so to do that, we type app.use express.json. Okay. So now that we save that, um, our server should still be running, and it is. So let's see how we can actually um, test these out. So I'm going to not maximize that. I'm going to maximize it, but not make it a new screen. So to, to actually test our routes, we're going to use something called Postman. Um, you don't need to have this right now for this workshop. Um, but if you if you are building uh, APIs and stuff like that, you should download it for your for your to test your own projects. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click this button that says New Request, and I'm just going to name this uh, Git Note. Put it in this test test collection. All right. 
And right here, it's asking me for this for the URL. So the URL that we're going to use is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash local host port 3001 and slash API. And actually, this should be a post, not a git. Uh, let's just create. No. Okay. So now I'm going to click on body. I'm sorry. Um, right. Click on body. Now I'm going to click on raw, click on JSON. And uh, I'm going to create a, a note here. So we're going to give it a title of hello and a content of I'm a shell. Save that. Oh, save it and send it. And we get an error. I wonder why that is. Uh, let's see. That's the important part about testing. We can now see why we got that error. So I'm going to type console.log e.sh. Send it again. No such file or directory. Ah, yes, I know why. It's because it couldn't find it at the uh, DB folder. So now if I send it, there we go. You see, I, I it added an IB. Uh, and then it returned it back to me, and it also created this new file, uh, notes.json. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and add some of the other routes, or logic, and then the routes. Uh, I am going to kind of move through these uh, maybe a little bit quickly. So I can close the terminal. And uh, I'm back inside the index.js inside create note. And so now I'm going to create a route to read a note. So controllers are logic for the routes. Routes are actually just like the URL in your, in your, in your they're like a, a map, a guide to where you want to go, where you want to go. Um, so say you're at um, your house, but you want to go to the store. You would take a route to that store. It's kind of similar to that. Um, and just and a controller is the logic. So how do you want to get to that? No, how do you want to? What do you want to do when you get to that route exactly? Okay. I hope that made sense because I just made it up. Uh, all right. So we're inside the controllers file, and we're going to create a new one. Um, so we're going to type const read note. And then we're going to say read the notes again. All right. Now, this what well, what we want to do this time is we want to get an ID um, that's passed into the route, and so to do that, we get you say let ID equals request dot params. Yep, dot params. But then we want to change that ID into a number. So we're going to say ID equals number ID. And the reason why we're doing that 
is because in this route, this read, no, not read, read. Um, inside this route, we want to find a note by its ID. And so to do that, we type um, const note equals notes.find. And then we're gonna pass in another function inside this uh, method. So to do that, we do note by arrow. Um, and then we're gonna return uh, if note.id equals id. So this is gonna look for the note. If it can't find it, um, no, it's not. Uh, you will see that Angular uses a completely different syntax from React. Uh, yeah, Angular does use TypeScript, but like it, it, it's completely, completely different. Uh, yeah. All right, so if this, once this finds the note, um, it'll save it into that variable note. If it doesn't find it, um, then it's going to say, well, note is undefined. So if note does not equal undefined, then we want to return the note uh, and return a, 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 J, um, a, a status code. So we say res.status 200. Where's that JSON note? Else, if it does return undefined, what we're going to do, I'm going to copy this line up above. We're just going to create an error object, um, change that to couldn't find note, and return that. So now let's export this as well. And if I go to our routes right here, I'm going to create another route. So this is going to be API router dot git forward slash colon ID. And basically, this is saying we're looking for anything on the route that has an ID at the end. The ID is just any number. Uh, it could be anything, really, uh, because we're, we're going to be finding by a number. Um, but it's just looking for anything that gets on the uh, API route. Um, so now let's add a callback. And now I need to actually require our logic for reading a note or for getting a note. So now if I save that, I'm going to bring up uh, Postman. I don't know why I was saying Notion. Uh, and we are, I already have a Git route in here, so I'm just going to reuse that. So uh, this is actually 2001. And I'm going to try to read the note stored at um, ID 0. We only have one note anyway. And so it got the note and it read it for us. So now it's there. Okay. Uh, we got about 20 minutes left. I think we can get through these last um, routes pretty quickly. So the next one we're going to do is, although I said uh, we're building a CRUD app, C-R-U-D, we're actually building a C-U-R. Uh, the C U R R D uh, because we have two read routes. So this was the first read route. This basically just gets one note, uh, but now we want to add another one for getting all the notes in our, in the uh, array. So to do that, we're going to create another route, another logic, some uh, called const read notes. We're also going to load the notes again. Okay. And 
here, what we want to check for uh, is we want to check if the notes array um, has anything in it. Um, and then we can return it. So we're going to say if notes.length is greater than zero, we're going to send that response code, of, uh, the status code of 200. And we're going to send the notes in uh, JSON. But if it doesn't uh, have a link, I'm just going to copy this error message again and just change it um, to notes array is empty. All right. So let me save that and I'll export it. And come up to our routes and require it. I'm going to add a new route, so API router.get, which looks very similar to the one above, but we're not going to add this ID. We, we don't need that. So then I'm just going to move on to adding our callback. So before I do that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create another note. Um, this uh, JavaScript. Oh, where'd it go? That was we'll say Java script is not Java. And then we're gonna send this. Oh no, what? I'm going to create note body. And there it created another note for us. Uh, and now I'm going to add a um, another route. So I'm going to add a request. Get notes. And this should get all the notes for us. And there, we now have an array of all the notes. Let me read the chat really quickly. Recommended TypeScript for strongly typed projects. Helps others understand your code easier than normal JS. Since you don't need to perform your types, you can also make. Yep, TypeScript is really good. Um, yeah, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. Um, it adds the ability to add types. Um, I mean, well, not and you already have types in JavaScript, but allow your allow you to type your variables and stuff like that. Um, there is a slight misconception though that it's very slim, similar to like type checking in Java because it does not check for types at compile time. Uh, so you can type a variable uh, and it'll still run because it's JavaScript. All right. Um, so now let's add a route to um, edit our notes. So if I come back to controllers, I'm going to create a route called update notes. 
or update note. And we're going to do something similar to above. Uh, also, uh, we're now going to make this a const because we're going to update this array. So we're going to say let notes equals load note. We're also going to get this ID and change it to a number. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to find that note. So I'm going to come back up here, copy this line again. But we're going to change this variable. We're going to make it lit, and we're going to change it to found note. And then what we want to do um, is we're going to say if found note is not equal undefined. First thing we want to do is we want to remove it from the array. And so to do that, we type notes equals notes dot filter. Uh, note dot ID is not equal found note dot ID. So if the note that ID does not equal the found note ID, then keep it in the array. Um, but if it does equal, then uh, move it out of the array. Okay. And so we want to create a variable of note equals Dot, dot. But we want to keep the same ID. So if the user adds an ID, we don't want them to, to, uh, to change it. Okay. So now we want to push this new note back to the array. So we say notes.push note. Okay. And then we say we're going to sort it by ID. So notes dot sort comma B um, basically this method allows us to, to sort the array. Um, if A is greater than B, then we want to uh, move it up. But if um, B is greater than A, then we want to move A down. Um, that's basically what that does. Okay. Then we want to save notes. Okay. And then we want to return a response. So res.status 200, res.json equals note, save that. And now we want to handle the case if the note is undefined. So we're just going to do what I've done previously, just copy the error message, print it down. Um, we'll say note not found. And so now if we come back to Postman, uh, let's create a route for, um, actually, we need to create the URL, sorry, before I can use them. So let's export it. And then come to routes. I'm just going to copy this line right here. Actually, no, this one. And instead of using dot get, we're going to use another verb called put. Uh, 
Oh, what? I messed up. Right. So now if I come back to Postman and I create a route um, for putting something into the um, database, I'm going to say update notes. We're going to change the method to put. I'll just copy this right here. Uh, and we're going to update note one. So if I go to body and I go to raw JSON, uh, we're just going to change the title to something. Right. Hold on. Uh, we did not. Oh, that's because I'm using read notes instead of update note. And now I'm getting an error. Load note is not a function. All right, because it should be load notes. With all errors aside, this should work. All right. It didn't. Uh, it, send, it didn't send us the right one. Uh, but if I go to uh, get notes. It didn't update at all. Now we're running to an issue with logic. Um, hmm. Let's see where we're messing up. We're getting the found note. Uh, I'm just going to change this to ID. Const note equals founder. Hmm. Uh, oh, I know where I'm messing up at. I'm not actually getting the body. Uh, and that is wrong. I need to get the body. So let's do um, that's what I'm messing up at. And there, it updated it. Okay. Uh, we have uh, 10 minutes left. Um, I can knock out the delete one really quickly. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste it from um, a finished um, um, lesson. And I'm going to paste it. And I'll just kind of show you guys um, what it does. All right, basically, so we have this um, method, const delete note. Again, we're reading the notes uh, and we're checking for the ID. All right, and if we found the note, um, then we want to keep it. Uh, we want to filter it um, from any of the notes. Now we're checking here to see if the notes.link is greater than filter notes. Um, so filtered notes should have one less note than um, the regular notes of white ray once it's um, deleted. And so if that's true, uh, we're gonna return um, uh, like everything is okay. 
But if it doesn't, if they have the same link, um, then we're going to say, all right, there was no note removed. Um, and then we're going to say you sent a bad request, basically. So if I save that and if I come to routes, I'm going to uh, import it, delete note. Say that. I'm going to type the API router dot delete. Yep. What am I doing? Request response. And then we're going to say delete note request response so now if i save that i'll create another one um i don't know why we're seeing that create another um request we're going to call this delete we're going to change the method to delete all right so now we deleted that note so if i go back and i look at the database actually we haven't even looked at it we only have one note okay um so that's kind of a introduction to um, building APIs with Node and Express. Um, I, I understand that there was a lot there, but I kind of wanted to show you guys everything um, that goes into um, building an API. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll stick around here um, for a little bit. I'll be here until the session ends at um, 11, I'm sorry, 12. So yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, post them there. Thank you. If you guys want to see what a server looks like without Express, with just using plain Node, I can show you really quickly so you know why it's good to use it. So, here is the, this right here. Is the route to is the route to create create a note, and you see all that code, just to create a note. But with Express, it's just this. It's just this. So that's why that, that's why there's a benefit from for to using Express over just the um http module uh, but yeah thank you guys for coming